Hello, okay, we're now recording. So I've already given kind of a brief intro to a few students here, but um, if you have any questions during this, um, feel free to turn your mic on and, and speak up. I have no problem with that at all. Um, or just email myself or Sarah. Sarah is included here in the meeting too. Either of us can help answer any questions you might have about the company, about how to apply, about you know anything about what AMS is about. So feel free to do that at any point. But um, AMS is a nuclear engineering consulting firm. So we do focus a lot in testing of instrumentation and various control systems within nuclear power plants. Although um, we do a lot of research and development projects, both in the nuclear sector and, and outside. So um, we're able to do a lot of testing at nuclear power plants, as well as here on site in um, Knoxville, Tennessee. So um, we're headquartered here. We've been here since the late seventies and we were essentially established by our president who went to UT for one of his PhD degrees and essentially started a spinoff company through research um, alongside ORNL. So we still work with places like that, local companies or even um, international plants uh, to provide services like testing or research. So we do everything from designing and developing hardware to the software end um, to actually implementing and providing the testing service or just generally consulting. So that can be within the industry or um, with, with more hands-on applications as well. So in regards to students, we're always looking for electrical engineers, computer engineers, computer science majors, which um, I assume probably people within this chat are, are those majors, but um, just really anyone who's interested in applying their skills in that way, we, we're definitely interested in talking to you and we're um, slowly growing. So we are looking to, to bring on, um, uh, you know, a lot of various students or, or, you know, it can be entry level versus a few years experience. We know that not a lot of people have experience within the nuclear industry. Um, so it's not something that you, you necessarily have to have in order to, to start at our company. And um, it's just something that we'd put a lot of thought into as far as training you and giving you a lot of material to read over and to study on the nuclear end as well as just the application um, at, at our company. So um, on the technical end, I, I kind of touched on this at the beginning, but um, we probably weren't recording at the time. So um, two technical areas um, that we do testing in, both on-site at plants and on-site at AMS's lab spaces are um, cable testing. So we do a lot of cable degradation monitoring. We basically created this online monitoring system that allowed us to go to plants, um, whether it be nuclear or otherwise. We do work with, um, for instance, a tram system in Hong Kong, we do work for um, cable systems within Facebook's, um, one of their network centers. So it doesn't necessarily have to have a nuclear application, but most of the time it does. Um, but essentially we do run tests to make sure that these cables aren't you know, uh, degrading at a certain rate. And if they are, how to replace them or fix them, or just what kinds of monitoring do we do to provide some preventative maintenance kind of services too. And then in addition, to, in addition to cable, we do a lot of EMC testing. So a lot of electromagnetic compatibility monitoring and um, testing of customer equipment or hardware, just to make sure that once they're placed into a nuclear power plant setting, it won't negatively impact um, the other equipment or just uh, the, the setting in general as far as noise on the electromagnetic level. So we do a lot of various testing with that. And, um, any student with an electrical engineering background, not necessarily having to have a minor or any kind of focus in electromagnetics to, to get started with us, um, that's a good fit. So we have hired students from UTC and they still work for us. So um, we're, we're excited to just get a connection going with your school and, and get to know more students and, and teachers and um, just career service members. So uh, we're, we're happy to be able to get this this group message going and seeing where it goes but uh it's definitely an open conversation um anytime you have questions you can you can always call or email me or sarah like i mentioned um i included in the chat here and i know that um nicole probably from career services sent out some information as well but i would definitely recommend checking out our technical website um we do quite a bit uh, as far as 
promoting our different research areas and just technical areas, anything from the equipment side to um, what kind of testing we do to um, what we're developing on site in the research areas. Um, so definitely check out ams-cork.com. And then as far as applying or checking out things like our benefits, our openings, and actually going through the application process, we have ams-corp or sorry, ams-careers.com, um, which is a separate site. So you can check out both. Um, I guess to go into to benefits a little bit more, it is, um, you know, we're, we tend to be generous with our benefits. So that's a good, just total compensation package to consider in coming out of school. Um, so definitely check that out and let us know if you have any questions. Um, if you do travel to a plant, uh, we make sure that people have the opportunity to do that in the initial first few months, um, just so you can get the experience and know if that's something that you're really interested in. And um, also just so you can get training one-on-one. -on -one. Um, something to maybe elaborate a little bit more on is our training process and program. So we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training. And essentially, if anyone new comes in, whether you're an administrative assistant, an engineer, an accountant, doesn't matter. We will assign a supervisor. That supervisor essentially mentors you for, for you know, upwards of the first year, just until you get acclimated to the business. And um, so you can also get one-on-one -on -one technical training, especially within the lab and working with our pr proprietary kind of equipment that uh, maybe you haven't been exposed to before. So um that's really strong and just gives people a good starting point as far as coming out of school and and getting some experience in there um but we um, like i mentioned earlier are, are slowly growing so it's something to where we're going to be consistently hiring and recruiting over the next five years um and just slowly growing and adding to our team right now we have about 70 people on site and about 100 people total with contractors um and in consultants that kind of thing so um it's a really good size business to where um you're not just a number you're gonna come in and and really be a part of the team immediately and ams is really good as far as assigning you know really um in-depth projects and maybe things that you haven't had exposure to right away that way you can really hit the ground running um get on some really cool projects and and uh really show us what you've got pretty much straight out the gate. So a lot of people give us that, that good feedback. Um, we do have in our training process as well, kind of a 90, 90 day period to where um, we can make sure that you're hitting goals and give you a lot of feedback. Um, that way it's really just open communication as to um, ways that you can um, just get more involved in different projects in the company. Maybe it's even something that you're interested in. Maybe you figured out that, you really enjoy the research side or you're really interested in this upcoming project and you want to travel to Taiwan to do testing, um, then just be really open and honest with your supervisor and that way you can get on some really cool projects. So, um, specifically alongside benefits, you know, we, we do have competitive pay to, to start, especially for the Knoxville area. I would assume, I'm not exactly sure, but I would assume that cost of living is pretty similar to Chattanooga, but um, so that wouldn't be so much of a, of a shock if you didn't move. Um, but I will say that AMS is a super stable company and that we've been here for so long and we're rooted in the community. So we wouldn't expect that you have to, to pick up and move in order to stay with the company long term. As far as long term um, opportunities, we definitely want people to feel like they can make this their, their long term career, their home, and provide any opportunities so that you can, you can make that happen with us. So. That is why we're pretty fluid as far as cross training and allowing people to um, just figure out what they're best at and what they enjoy the most. What we do is really specific. So finding someone who has that exact experience doesn't happen very often. So we allow people just kind of the, the flexibility to be able to figure that out with time. And so you'd want to you know, stay with us long term. So um, Sarah, can you think of anything else to add as far as a general intro? Um, I think you pretty much covered everything um, very thoroughly, I thought, so good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> uh, 
Um, anybody in the chat have initial questions so far to go over? Anything that, that you're interested in learning more about, whether it's the positions or just the company? Feel free to turn your mics on if you're able. I think you're able to. Hope you're able to. Nothing so far? Yeah, I have a question. Oh, uh, well, yeah. what's the range of plants y'all usually like, work with? Um, you, you said out of country? Mm hmm Sometimes. Great question. So I didn't know if like it was just generally in the South that y'all went to plants in the South or like what? Yeah, but, so we, um, we actually have service at some point every um, plant in the United States, which right now I think there's an active 98 units. Some plants have multiple units, so that's in about 30 something states. Um, and then as far as globally, we probably service around 50 units outside the US in some form or fashion. That doesn't necessarily always mean traveling out to that side every time. Sometimes it's performing um, training or virtual training sometimes at this point. We've had to adapt a little bit during this kind of strange time. So um, it's good to know that our business wasn't truly affected um, and that we were able to keep going. But yeah, um, so kind of a, a, a global presence, both with um, just partnerships and service. And I will say though that the domestic travel tends to be more often, but expect to travel usually more during the fall and spring because nuclear plants are going through outages, refueling, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And it just kind of happens to flow that way. But typically about three to five days in duration for a domestic trip is very average, maybe once to sometimes twice a month during those times when it's busier. And then maybe a couple to, to no international trips, depending on your group. Okay, sweet, thank you. You're welcome, great question. Um, we do also have a benefit in that if you're traveling out um, on a, if you happen to travel on a weekend for a trip, if it leaks over to a weekend, whatever the situation is, we provide um, comp time for that. So just because you're a salaried employee doesn't mean you don't get a benefit for that. You actually get a um, comp vacation day for any, vaca any weekend day that you're gone. So let's say you travel um, uh, Thursday through Monday. Then for that Saturday and Sunday, you get two earned vacation days in addition to your regular vacation days. So that's a good perk, I like to think. Anything else, any other questions or things that I can maybe go into a little bit more in depth on? I had a question about um, certain positions. Sure. So let's say like you start off at one position, but then you realize you're better suited for another one. It's like, is the transition easy? Yeah, so we, we've had that happen before. Um, typically, we'll try to figure, out, figure that out as best we can during the interview process. And a lot of times you will figure out more of what you're interested in by talking with um, the engineers and the engineer, um, the, just the head of the engineering departments. They can give you more of what a day-to-day -day looks like and then you can figure out, oh, okay, I probably am more interested in this. But let's say you come in as a software developer but you realize that you're really good at cable testing or you really enjoy that and you like going to the plants more and you like being hands-on with the equipment. We've had people just be, as long as you're honest about it and you let us know that that's your interest, we can definitely start working towards that. And being a smaller company, it allows us to be a little bit more flexible and that we can make that transition not so uh, paperwork driven and that we can just work with you and, and get you over to, to what you like to do better. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> you're welcome. Sorry. No, you're fine. That was a great question. <laughs> I'm trying to give an example. We, we have, um, that's the most recent example I can come up with in that a, um, a mainly software person that had an electrical engineering background. Um, <coughs> sorry, let me get a drink really quick. Um, just liked being in the lab space a little bit more than just in the office. <clears throat> and there's typically a good mix no matter what. Even if you're a software developer coming in, at AMS, we really do want people to be cross-trained so that you're not focused in just one area. We want you to feel like you are growing, like you do have experience in a lot of different areas to where you don't feel stagnant, both on just the personal growth level and just growth within the company. <clears throat> um, something to mention is that we do like to promote from within. So. 
um, you know, if, if people do have that ability or just that interest in, in growing into a leader, um, we want to be able to meet with you on a normal basis to go over just how you're doing and what you're interested in. So that way we can discover that a little earlier. Um, we've had, you know, all of our main department heads have been here for a long time. They've been here for a minimum of 10 years. Um, so <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, essentially people can build their careers here and what better way to do that than get a lot of experience and be um, very um, expertise in multiple areas. So that's why we do want people to have, you know, some kind of focus area, but also have that flexibility to kind of transition over into different projects and things while working for us. So, yeah. Anything else? I'm happy to elaborate. Even if it's a specific technical question, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it a go. Oh, I had, I thought of one more question. I might as well ask it. Um, sure. When you mean training, do you mean like you would just basically get trained in that specific area that you're interested in? We have, I, that's a great question. Um, we kind of have both. So we have one-on-one -on -one training for very specific areas. So for example, let's say you haven't been involved in one particular kind of testing within the EMC. Well, that's gonna involve going one-on-one -on -one in the lab with your supervisor most likely, or just the expert in that area going through the procedure, actually using the equipment, hooking everything up, getting some data, running analysis on it. And the big portion of, of the training within the lab is gonna be focused on data acquisition. So um, once you do that kind of training and get your feet wet a little bit more, if there are other areas that you're interested in or that we're holding short courses on or other various trainings, um, it doesn't matter if you're in that department or not. If, if if you want to get um, more involved in it, then absolutely, you know, sit on the training, learn more about it, either computer-based training or um, lectures or other conferences. We host short courses and conferences when we can for outside people, but encourage our people to also sit in on them and get kind of a crash course, especially if you haven't been here for very long. So it's kind of a mix of both. Okay, and this would occur like after the hiring process and all that fun stuff. Right. And initially, so during the 90 days, we have what we call a 90 day checklist. And that is um, for a technical hire. So you, that would be very technical um, in nature as far as um, various testing areas, different areas as far as the research goes and where to find things on the file server, everything administrative to technical. So um, that gives people at least a good start and kind of something more tangible as opposed to just <coughs> as projects come through. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> I keep getting joked. Um, something else to mention when um, people do get hired on, so let's say that you're not going to start for a little while, it's going to be a few months um, or even a few weeks, immediately Sarah or I will send out reading material. That way you're not just starting with, with no context. Um, be able to go through either nuclear regulatory kind of material or <coughs> Sarah, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? <coughs> Sorry. So send out reading materials such as um, just more basic things about nuclear plants. Um, we also have all kinds of material on the types of testing that we do. Um, and how that works and kind of what it's for. Um, we also have copies of our president's books that he's written um, on instrumentation and control. So that kind of helps you learn a little bit more about what we do and why we do it. And that can be very detailed material. Anything from, our, I would say the most popular book is Center Performance, um, which is a, a big portion of what we do both on the research and just applied testing end um, is dealing with sensors and um, so uh, if you have experience with that in any of your classes and you found that you're really interested in that, it, it, even just in general with software and hardware integration with just testing processes or data acquisition, then um, AMS is a good place for you to get started and learn a lot. Yeah, thanks Sarah. <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything else that you guys are wondering that I could elaborate a little bit more on?
I will, I will ask a question. I knew it was coming. I was just <laughs> question is, so, uh, just because it, it tends to be frequent. Can you, um, let us know if you offer any, uh, tuition assistance? Like if a student wants to go into a graduate program, does your company offer anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um, not right now. We don't have any kind of tuition reimbursement in place. So that's a great point to make. If, if grad school is something that you definitely want to do right out of school, I definitely take, um, you know, think about that as your option before um, full time at AMS. But <clears throat> we have had people go back to get something like their MBA while working for us. Um, but a good thing is, is that we are going to still be hiring. Even if you did decide to go back to grad school, we'd still be interested in hiring you afterwards. So um, still would be a good situation, but we do pr try to provide as much technical expertise training as we can while people work here. That way you feel like you're consistently growing and learning, um, and, and are growing in expertise here at AMS. So, um, that was a good question though. <clears throat> um, I guess, you know, technical areas that people can grow into um, is one thing to talk about, which we kind of did. It's, we do everything from software to hardware developing to um, just the testing process to uh, designing and building these data acquisition systems on site and maintaining them, um, cal calibrating all the way to, um, you know, doing the data analysis side, the research and development side usually for the Department of Energy um, or other, you know, Department of Defense kind of projects. But there's also a few different avenues that people can grow into. Um, we do a lot of, of marketing and sales on our end internally, um, just business development in general. So if that's something that you'd kind of like to, to merge into or that you have an interest in, if you have one of those personalities that you need to, you know, <clears throat> go out and meet new faces a lot and you just, uh, uh, want that to be part of your your day-to-day -day, then we definitely have a need for that especially just people who want to grow into that kind of role so that's also something to just think about um, as far as if you're thinking of long-term um, situations so something to also mention I have another question um, sure. would you like for the hiring process would you guys prefer like students that are about to graduate or have graduated or are still in school? That's a great question. We usually will start talking to students as far as initial interviews, the very beginning of their senior year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's typically when we'll start the process. Um, but that's just because we don't have any active internships or co-ops right now. We only have full time. So um, that's a great question. But Honestly, it's it's better to get the information going and the conversation going now. So, you know, no matter where you are in, in your schooling, we like to meet people now. And I we have hired people that I have known for four years now because they've been at every career fair or they've just kept in touch with me. And it's honestly the best way to, to um, build a relationship early on. So, um, but yes only full-time right now. So typically the beginning of senior year is when we'll start the actual interview process. Okay. Good question. Is everyone in the, I, I'm assuming um, everyone in this chat is probably electrical <clears throat> or computer um, engineer, or computer science major. So if you have any questions specifically <clears throat> about that on the software end, we use a lot of lab view. And it's just really, it's made by National Instruments. We use their hardware and it's just good for integration and, and building um, certain, uh, I don't know the exact technical terms, but like testing modules, things like that, that might not even be the correct term, but um, using it for data acquisition, that data acquisition process uh, works really well for us. So if you've used LabVIEW in school and you found out that you really like using it um, or any kind of object oriented programming, then that's a good place to start, especially if you're interested in the testing or developing end, um, or even a mix of software and hardware. Um, like I mentioned, even if you're in software, you're usually in the lab a lot and um, getting a lot of experience with hands-on equipment and the testing process too. So that's something to mention. If you're interested in that, definitely go to um, the National Instruments website. They have a lot of 
I think actually right now, um, during, during COVID, they have uh, free training. Don't quote me on that. You might have to have some kind of subscription for it, but that's something to, to check out, at least at this point. <coughs> um, on the, we do quite a bit on the QA end as far as um, quality assurance, not really quality control as much. We do a little bit of quality control because we do build equipment and maintain it here on site. We're definitely not a mass manufacturer by any means. We do manufacture certain pieces depending on kind of one-off projects. A lot of people do have that question. Well, do you build big pieces of machinery that go into plants to be installed? No, typically not. Um, but um, on the quality assurance end, if that's something that interests you, um, we do have um, an opening for that as well. Uh, we do have to adhere to a lot of different standards within the nuclear industry and just um, on the electrical end as well. So on, in our EMC lab, we are an A2, it's called A2LA accredited, and we have to follow what's called ISO 17025 standards as well as NRC standards, so um, NQA1 um, on the nuclear end. So if you have that kind of interest or um, um, if you're a very analytical, organized person, that might be a good spot for you too, just to learn more about. And on our website, we have this specific page for that too. So if anyone's interested. Mm, any other questions or areas that you're interested in hearing about? As far as um, location, you know, if you have any questions about Knoxville, um, what to do in the area, <clears throat> what it's like to live here, Sarah actually just moved here from California, so she probably has better insight to that than I do, since I've probably, I've been in Tennessee for my whole life, but <clears throat> um, I'm sure it wouldn't be a big move for most of you, but um, just feel free to reach out, even if it's a small question like that. Um, anything else, Sarah? Um, I think you're doing a great job, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning stuff, too. Oh, good. <clears throat> um, if anyone does have questions after this, um, like I said, you can email us anytime. You're not bothering us. You can call our office. Um, I'll go ahead and insert my in, in the chat here um, my direct line. That way, if you do have questions, just give me a call. Um, we will, you know, it depends on kind of what the, what the climate looks like, um, but we, we like to come on site to UTC, and we have been. So um, we hope to see everybody at least sometime in person. If you are a senior, if you're graduating, as of, I guess, this week or next week. I'm not exactly sure what the timeline looks like, but um, definitely give us a call sooner rather than later. And um, we, as a business, you know, during this time, we've <clears throat> just had to adapt like everybody else with working remote, but it was nice to see that we didn't really skip a beat um, and everyone kept working as normal and it was very still stable. So um, that was really good to see, but um, we are starting to prepare again for on-site interviews. So that's the final step in our process. So <clears throat> um, if you do have any questions about what the interview process looks like, typically we'll do an initial video. We do that even, you know, just normally as a part of our process. And then typically it's going to be a staff video after that. And then we'll have people here for on-sites to be able to go through <clears throat> a tour of the facilities get to talk one-on-one -on -one with various groups, not just one group that you're interested in. That way, like I was um, talking to Ariel about, um, you can get a good idea as to what the day-to-day -day looks like in different groups. Um, there's no way that you'd know unless you've probably been here before or talked with people who work here. So that's the purpose of that. And then, um, you know, you're able to kind of get a better idea as to if you think AMS is a good fit for you and, and vice versa. And so we'll get those back started here really soon. And I'm excited when that was gonna happen. But I've included my um, my phone number here directly at the office if anyone does wanna give me a call. Um, 
Anything else? And Just to sorry. follow up, since you were talking about full-time opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer that they go directly to your website to apply, or do you all have um, positions listed on Handshake? Just so that they kind of know if they decide to apply for a full-time position, what's the best route? Actually, either. Um, Sarah checks Handshake. Uh, they come directly to her, and that's an everyday thing. Um, actually, Sarah and I are the two that review every single resume coming through. So either way works just as well for us. But one thing I do recommend, though, is if you met us here, um, just send us an email. That way we have some kind of context as to how you heard about us and, and um, uh, where you're coming from, and we'll be able to talk a little bit more personally. <coughs> Sorry. Um, good question, though. Um, and you'll probably see on the side that we're we're hiring for for multiple multiple positions multiple spots per position um that is just because we're growing and at this point you know we could hire a few electrical engineers right now so as of um now so um oh one thing to mention oh go ahead oh sorry i just had a quick question yeah um and you said you start um the interview process at the start of senior year Mm -hmm. um, would that lead to like them being hired during their senior year or after they graduate? And we typically will um, be prepared to give an offer um, uh, even a few months before they graduate. Typically, not a ton sooner than that, but um, for the right candidate, if it's a you know if it's a perfect fit, we're definitely willing to to do that a little bit earlier. So, okay, that's a great question though. <clears throat> and. Um, if you haven't checked it out, I mean, it depends on if some, sometimes this is important to someone, sometimes it's not, but we have really nice facilities. They're always very clean, very organized, modern. Um, so if that's something that interests you, there's a lot of photos online. Um, just makes for a better work environment because you always know where things are. And um, we have a lot of visitors that come on site, <clears throat> even if it's through various entities. What we'll typically do, as both the, the training process and just in general to show our abilities, we'll go through demos, um, especially to visitors who are coming that might be potential customers or clients, which in our case, a lot of the time is going to be plant personnel or just people that are um, in some way local or related to um, research projects we're doing. So <clears throat> we'll have newer people um, hop on a demo and that way you can go through an actual test and show them exactly how the equipment works or what the process looks like and what kind of data we're looking for and why. So that's kind of a cool, I guess, intro on the, on the training end too, that's more applied. <clears throat> um, anyone have any specific questions, I guess, about our different areas like EMC or cable? Even if they're technical, I'll try to answer. Do my best. It's okay if not. Sorry, I don't remember all the positions that were listed on the email, but um, I do I do think there was one that was centered around research, or at least maybe two of them. I don't remember the exact name for it. Probably, it was probably the EMC and cable. Um, a lot, almost every, we do hire people sometimes and then provide them with the title of research engineer. However, mm -hmm. almost every group of ours takes part in some kind of research work. Um, whether it be a little bit more or less depends on the group. So cable and what we call EMC um, or the electromagnetic compatibility group, they do a lot of applied research, whether it be on the testing end or just actual publications, um, that kind of thing. So <coughs> you're exposed to it really no matter what. All right, because I saw all your positions. And I'm not really sure which one I'm going to apply for yet, but... Um... And if you're kind of, and if you want to take a look to even after this, if you're not exactly sure which one is the best for you, just give me a call or, or shoot me an email and I can kind of go over your resume with you and see maybe what the best fit would be just from a glance at least to get the process started. I'm always happy to do that. Okay. Because I know it's, it's very specific kind of testing and, and, and things. So it'd be yeah, hard. Yeah, because I don't have yeah. a lot of idea about what I'm going to do once I'm done here. So <laughs> in college. Are you are you an electrical engineer or a computer or something else? I'm in computer science. Great. Yeah, we definitely have a need right now for one tester and one developer. 
And mm -hmm. sometimes on the software end, let's say you don't have direct experience with LabVIEW, um, which uh, in a computer science major doesn't happen very often. So we're kind of used to that. Um, we're very willing to train people into it and we're willing to start people off as a tester. And we kind of have two paths. One would be okay. to grow into a lead tester position and become essentially the manager of the testing group. Or you can move more into a, a more development focused path. And then um, either on the tester or developer path, we provide um, any kind of certification. Typically, it's going to be LabVIEW, getting your certified LabVIEW associate developer certification first, and then you move up through that. But we pay for that. We definitely encourage that. It's just a good tangible way to know that you're, um, you're learning LabVIEW. And um, so those are the two typical paths. But, to, you know, people do learn to test and develop and contribute to both on a pretty normal basis. Okay. Uh, but let's say like you wanted to do like something that wasn't like according to your major like if i want to do something like electrical based or if i want to do like administrative work sure would that I would say, be okay because at a smaller company everyone pretty much does some administrative work at some point so you definitely <laughs> get experience with that even if it's more on like the leadership role um some people are slightly more hands off although i will say that almost everyone at ams ends up being heavily more heavily hands-on than hands-off we even okay. have our QA assistant for example um, she started as an administrative assistant with her company but you know she's grown into the uh, QA assistant and hopefully eventually QA manager that's the path she's going towards um, and has been to two plant trips and actually did the testing we wanted her to get that experience even though she didn't have a degree per se in, in doing something like that so um, you know, if you have the aptitude for it, we'd bring you in initially to be solely software because just, just to learn it, especially if you don't have LabVIEW experience. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to grow into other areas and you have that aptitude, then yeah, absolutely. We'd, we'd teach you how to do any kind of hardware testing, electrical base area. Okay. Because with my degree being very broad, we learn a bunch of stuff and it's just, there's sort of like, you go any direction. So I'm always mm -hmm. sort of not sure what I'm going to be doing once I graduate. We even do a little bit of just on the software. I know this is very software focused, but um, a little bit of uh, database work. So any kind of just um, SQL, SQL, whichever it is you say. Um, and um, script using scripting languages. We do some internal projects too. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just developing in LabVIEW for, um, for customer based projects. For example, mm -hmm. We're coming up with this internal system of uh, barcoding equipment and a way that the software group is coming up with to, to scan a barcode and it automatically uploads all that information onto our QA documentation. That way there's no issue with transposing numbers or, or anything as far as uh, transferring that information over and it'll save us a lot of time. But that's a cool just little side project that um, a computer science major took over within that group and is working on now. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Great questions. Anyone else? Do you like it if people float around? If they like to move around and look at different positions and try different positions? Yeah, so we even, <clears throat> we, we have a rotation period too. I guess I should have mentioned that specifically um we like let's say a person gets started and they want a little bit of exposure more into qa um, we definitely spend you know a few days with them directly one-on-one -on -one with the qa manager making sure that they're super um understanding of our qa policies or just the process or standards <clears throat> um and just so they have more exposure and context in the other areas too you need to know all that stuff in order to know why we do certain things with our equipment, for, for example. But yeah, it's not, it's not viewed as a negative thing. We don't want people to feel like um, they're stagnant or they get bored. We don't want that at all. Um, we want people to feel like they have opportunities to hop onto different projects, as long as you do have a focus area. We definitely want, want people to have a focus area that they eventually gravitate towards. Um, but you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out if you're just graduating because you just 
don't have the experience to be able to figure that out immediately. So that is why we allow people to do some some cable projects, some EMC projects, more research-based work, or maybe heavily um, technical writing and research for um, a nuclear-related project for the DOE year. Um, that way you can figure out not only what you like, but what you're, you're good at, which helps AMS too. So it's kind of a win-win, but that's a good question for sure. So, um, Nicole, is there anything else that I have yet to cover or that I, you think I should go more in depth on? Um, maybe just some advice. I don't know if we have any uh, maybe juniors or sophomores in here, but I try to encourage them to attend the career fair, even if they're not a senior yet, so that mm -hmm. they can, you know, meet you in person and other companies. So can you touch base on that? Like, wow, that's important to establish that connection a little early. Yeah, absolutely. And like I mentioned, you know, I, I remember, I remember faces. Sometimes I remember names from even a few years ago, but I definitely will remember people that, that constantly come up to the booth. <clears throat> it shows number one, that you're, that you um, have the ability to follow up, um, which is really huge. You know, I not only encourage you to go to career fairs early to interact with, um, uh, employers early to show that you are truly interested and that you're following up, but to also follow up with an email, whether that be after a career fair or, um, and not just particular to AMS, just to, to employers in general. Um, after an interview, definitely follow up, let people know that, that you are um, interested and that you um, just, just in general, just a follow up. You, you'd be surprised how many times I don't get one or that Sarah doesn't get one. I'm sure she agrees. Mm -hmm. um, it's more on the, the rare end. And those people really stand out as true professionals, um, just organized. But, you know, when I see someone consistently coming to the booth and remembering not only what we do as a company, you know, if they've done their research before heading out to the booth, then that's just going to be just as impressive, if not more so. And let's us know, hey, okay, they truly are taking this, this job hunt seriously. But even if you don't know anything about us and you come up to the booth um, and you're there during your, like, like Nicole said, sophomore, junior year, even freshman year, it shows that you're trying to learn about the companies that are in the area and getting a better grasp early on what you want to do when you get out of school, which everyone knows is, is something that is, it takes a while to figure out. So the sooner you can go out to those events, especially at UTC, we've, um, I'm not just saying this because it's a UTC <laughs> Zoom. Um, we've really enjoyed going there. We've enjoyed the, the quality of students, um, the quality of their questions. Um, they seem prepared. And so, um, so yeah, it just establishes the relationship that much early and make sure that you are basically one step ahead of everybody else who either didn't prepare before the, the um, career fair or just doesn't seem as, as interested. I hope that answered it, but. Um, yeah, that was great, thank you. You're welcome, welcome. Has anyone on this chat met us before at the career fair or is this the first time for everybody? I met y'all. Hi. <laughs> That's good. I also met you. I kind of, I can't see anyone else's face, but Ariel and Alexandra. Um, um, I think I might have seen you guys, but I don't know if I came up and talked to you guys. Oh, why not? I'm just kidding. I don't I'm know. There's so many other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, too, sometimes even just going to the career fairs can be very overwhelming. And, and, it, and it can be overwhelming even for an employer coming in. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of signage. <laughs> There's just a lot of bodies in there. So um, it's understandable to be, you know, a little bit, a little bit nervous during those things. But um, there's not a single person at the career fair that's not going to be friendly towards you because they, they want to get to know you and they want you to work for their company. That's why they're there. So um, I hope that would be the case. <laughs> So if not, yeah. Um, well, that's good. You know, uh, like like Nicole was saying, definitely keep in touch with us. If you know of other people looking to, definitely send them our way, or um, we can 
answer any questions they might have. Um, Nicole, are there any other potential opportunities to set up a, maybe another one of these in a few months or maybe something like that later on if there's not an on-site career fair? We are waiting to hear back to kind of what the fall is going to look like, but I'm actually hoping to have at least one company per week do one of these. So <laughs> if at any time during the summer you'd like to host another one, that may allow some students who weren't able to attend this one or maybe if, you know, I've had some students who were offered a position and that's kind of been uh, revoked because of COVID-19. So we have quite a few who aren't sure what they're going to do, but they may kind of be interested a little more, you know, a few weeks from now. So if you'd like to host something in the summer, I will market it just like I did to the students. I sent them an email and posted it on Canvas, and we'd love to have you talk about this again. And then, of course, we have new students who are already on the email list, um, our incoming freshmen uh, or transfers. We actually have quite a few of those, and so they could join as well. Good. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, we'd definitely be interested in doing it, doing another one, too, just for the people who weren't able to join. or um, Just so more UTC people are also familiar with the name AMS, because it is a Knoxville-based company, and, you know, probably haven't heard of us before. Um, I hope this was helpful for everyone, and I hope that, you know, you have a, at least a better insight as to what our company is about, and um, if anyone has questions about my personal experience with the company, I'm happy to share that at any point. I'm sure Sarah is, too. Um, I've been here for over five years now, and that was pretty much right out of school, which I think doesn't happen as often anymore. Well, not I think. It doesn't. Um, it's just something to where I'm really thankful that I was able to find a company that I did want to be at long term pretty much right out of school. And, you know, I just can't say enough about how AMS will definitely give opportunities to people who just um, are, are starting out and starting out in their careers. So just a bunch of positive things that I've gained from working here. And um, I'm always happy to hop on a phone call or, or anything like that to, to talk more about my experience with the company, if that's something you're interested in hearing more about to make your decision on, on applying or, or moving forward with the process at all. If anyone is a pl planning to apply, definitely do um, just shoot either me or Sarah an email. Again, it's over in the um, chat box, but also um, was probably distributed through the, the Zoom meeting as far as my email. So um, just thank everybody for their time. And um, I look forward to hopefully seeing everybody in person again soon, hopefully. Um, and if not, then then definitely reach out and just stay in touch with us. Thank you for taking time out of your day to speak yes. with our students. I know they greatly appreciate it. And uh, this has been our most attended, I think, watch and learn session so far. So Ooh. that's <laughs> so that's great. Uh, and if, if things do go back to normal in the fall or a little more back to normal, we normally have sessions like these, but on campus, if you'd like to set one of those up, obviously that's kind of a waiting game right now, but, um, uh, we usually have a really good participation with that where students will attend and we just, we call it a lunch and learn and, um, they sign in and, and you can speak to them just like you are now, but if not, then we can continue to work on something similar to, to maybe a zoom session moving sure. forward like we had mentioned and um hopefully continue to work together and the students will be more familiar with AMS because it seems like you guys are a great company and and have a lot to offer absolutely yeah I think that that would be great and just um to where people are more familiar that can only help with getting the process started and, and hiring some UTC students so thank you guys so much and please do enjoy the rest of your day okay thank you you too all right Bye.